Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the recent announcement about the beautiful star known as Beetlejuice. And we're going to start our adventure right here in the Orion's Nebula. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to Other Math. So I wanted to start our adventure right here in the Orion's Nebula. The Orion's uh, Nebula is essentially a really, really big star nursery where a lot of new stars are made and some of them get kicked out and basically sent on an adventure across the galaxy. One of these stars is of course Betelgeuse. Roughly around 10 million years ago when it was made, something kicked it out of the um, initial starburst formation system gave it a huge boost of about 30 kilometers per second and sent it traveling across the galaxy. Now, the star itself is actually not very difficult to see. It's essentially one of the brightest stars in the night skies, 11th brightest to be uh, more exact. And because it's part of the Orion's constellation, it's usually really, really easy to find. So um, the bright star that you see right there in the middle, that's Betelgeuse. The extremely large and very bright red supergiant that's essentially like an accelerated version of our own sun. Because of its mass of about 11 masses of the sun, it lived its life really really quickly and is now ready to go supernova. And although many stars live for billions of years, these really massive large uh, stars normally live only a few million years, and so this is essentially the grandfather version of these really large stars. Here is one of the procedurally generated planets for this particular system. And even though we don't really know if there are any planets here, it's very likely that there are at least a few. So what exactly do we know about Betelgeuse and why is it suddenly in the news? Well, the main reason why Betelgeuse is suddenly in the news after being relatively um, uneventful for many, many years is because for some reason, the star has now become a lot dimmer than it should be, or at least than what we used to. In other words, in the last few months, the scientists realized that the uh, star Betelgeuse has become a lot dimmer. And to some extent, this made some scientists question whether this star is possibly ready to go supernova. So this is where th the story kind of gets a little bit interesting. First of all, the sudden dimming could technically be a sign of a supernova, um, and could actually be a kind of a, a telltale sign that the star is about to explode. But at the same time, um, there's actually no reason for us to believe that it is going to explode. And the main reason for that is because we think that it still has a few thousand years left in it. We think that Betelgeuse is not going to go supernova for at least a hundred thousand years from now. So in that sense, the scientific analysis suggests that it's actually probably not going to explode. But if it's not a supernova, why is it suddenly becoming dimmer? What uh, caused this sudden change? Well, what most people probably don't realize about Betelgeuse and a lot of other stars as a matter of fact, is that most stars are actually variable stars. The fact that our own sun is not a variable star is actually a complete coincidence. As a matter of fact, a lot of scientists believe that one of the main reasons why life was even able to evolve on our planet is because our sun is not a variable star and is actually extremely mild and doesn't really have many flares or well, basically it's a quiet, very shy star in comparison to everything else in the galaxy. Our sun has something known as solar cycles, but they're very, very mild in comparison to what a typical variable star goes through. The brightness variations in these variable stars are so dramatic that um, it can technically warm up and cool down a planet by like tens of degrees every single time this happens. And obviously trying to survive in these conditions would not really be beneficial to any type of life. But what's more is that the um, actual variability of Betelgeuse is not just a typical pattern uh, similar to what we have on our sun. The variability here is a lot more unpredictable and has several cycles interconnecting together. In some sense, this is somewhat familiar to the so-called Milankovitch cycles that happen here on Earth as well, and these are the result of various effects of either the Sun or the orbit of our planet or the actual axis um, changes of our planet. And altogether, they actually form a really complex pattern, but once in a while, 
all cycles can actually kind of connect together and create either the maximum or the minimum. And in this case, we believe that all of these cycles inside Betelgeuse are now forming this so-called minimum of brightness. In other words, it's not really a sign of Betelgeuse about to explode, it's more of a natural change that happens um, around Betelgeuse as a result of certain cycles and suddenly, when they all kind of combine together, we get the minimal brightness. Now it's very likely that within the next few months, it's going to start getting brighter again and then the cycles will continue. But for now, it's basically kind of a mystery, I guess. We're not entirely sure what really causes these cycles inside Betelgeuse, but it's going to be exceptionally interesting for scientists to figure out what is happening around this unusual star. Now, there are a lot of things we already know about the star. As a matter of fact, Betelgeuse is one of the most well-studied stars out there, but there are still quite a lot of mysteries. For example, we know that our own sun is also going to become a red supergiant one day, but unlike Betelgeuse, it's not going to go supernova. And also, um, even though for Betelgeuse all of this takes about 10 million years, for our sun it will take a thousand times more at least 10 billion years from the birth of the sun until its demise. The other thing that always fascinates me is how tremendously large Betelgeuse is right now. So our sun is actually somewhere right there, very close to Betelgeuse, but it's very difficult to see. It's actually this really, 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 really tiny dot in the middle and all the planets are there as well. So as a red supergiant, this is actually an inflated star and our sun is going to be possibly a little bit smaller, um, I think about four times smaller than Betelgeuse right now. But nevertheless, this humongous star um, gives you an idea of how large these stars become when they reach the end of their life cycle. And also because our sun is just not massive enough, unlike Betelgeuse, it's not going to leave behind a neutron star or a black hole, it's going to leave behind a white dwarf. But Betelgeuse is about 11 masses of the sun, which suggests that once it goes supernova, it's probably going to leave a neutron star behind and create a relatively active pulsar that we'll hopefully be able to detect from planet Earth when it actually happens. And what's really interesting is that if you were to look at the night skies in infrared instead of visual light, you would discover that Betelgeuse is actually the brightest infrared star out there and is one of the brightest infrared sources out there in the night skies. Which of course suggests that it just produces a lot of heat. So all of the planets that could be present in the star system even if they're really far away from the star, are still going to be exceptionally hot. There's a lot of radiation and a lot of it is in infrared, warming up all of these planets quite dramatically. But at the same time, hypothetically, well, what if it does go supernova? What if it's actually basically showing us its last signals before it explodes? And we can of course try to simulate this in Universe Sandbox by just doing this. So if it is going supernova, is it going to be dangerous for us? Well, it's located at least 600 light years away from us, probably more like 640, 650. That is really, really far away. A supernova at this distance has absolutely no effect on anything on our planet, but it will be very, very beautiful. The supernova created here will be um, very likely similar in brightness to the full moon in the night skies, and it's going to stay like this. So basically imagine there's another um, object similar to the moon for at least um, a few weeks, possibly a month or so. And then eventually it will dissipate and disappear, leaving behind a neutron star, of course. And so other than uh, very beautiful night skies and of course other than scientific curiosity and a lot of opportunities to study supernova, the Betelgeuse explosion will have no effect on anything here on the planet. Now some scientists suggested that, well, because it's going to produce such a bright object in the night skies, somewhat similar to the moon, it might affect certain night animals that um, rely on the moon to um, regulate various cycles. And this is kind of similar to the circadian rhythm that um, humans have. But anyway, other than that, there's going to be very little effect on the solar system and on our planet. So in that sense, there's really nothing to worry about. But nevertheless, 
it's something that a lot of scientists do hope that happens in our lifetime, mostly because it will allow us to study so much about the star and about supernova and of course about the creation of neutron stars and pulsars. The last such event happened in 1987 and this happened in a nearby galaxy known as the Large Magellanic Cloud, which created this beautiful explosion that you can actually still see in the night skies if you have a powerful enough telescope and we have recently discovered the neutron star that was left behind. But the chances of this happening and for us to actually see something like this much closer to our planet are currently very very low. The vast majority of scientists do not think that the supernova is going to occur within the next few thousands of years. On that note, I guess that's really it. That's all I wanted to mention in this video. I wanted to talk about the star for a very long time, but it was difficult to find a topic because it's just not really that um, active right now and there's not much going on and not much changing in it. And so it was actually exciting to hear that something finally did change and I got a reason to talk about Beetlejuice. By the way, a lot of people have been asking, so why does it have this strange name? What is Beetlejuice? Well, just like so many other stars, the name is actually Arabic. And it stems from the word Ibt al Jausa, which um, basically means the armpit of Orion. Now, I think you can probably guess why it's called that. Because that right there is the Betelgeuse, and this is the constellation known as Orion. So in that sense, the name is just a description, literally, of the object's location. And because the Orion constellation is mentioned in different uh, mythologies around the world, both the um, hand or armpit and also the belt of Orion are relatively popular around the world. And all of them have their own specific names. And one last thing I wanted to mention is in regards to the total size of the star. So as I mentioned before, it is a really large object, but it still is a little bit smaller than the largest star ever discovered, which is UI Scuti that you see right here. This is their size comparison, and um, as you can see, it's just a little bit smaller. Nevertheless, a huge object and something that's going to one day create a really beautiful supernova. And before I finish this, let's actually also add our sun when it does become a large supergiant, just to see how all of this looks like in comparison. And so when our sun becomes a red supergiant, it's going to be about this big. Not really as dramatically big as some of the other stars, but still really, really large in comparison to what it is today. Anyway, on that note, let's wait and see what happens to Betelgeuse and what we discover about this dimming effect. For now, that's something we need to study a little bit more before we can discover the reasons and the actual causes and of course the consequences of what might happen to the star afterwards. So if you'd like to learn more about Betelgeuse and about other stars, make sure to subscribe and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Come back tomorrow to learn something else possibly support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. And either way, I'll see you tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.